Hey guys, t Bull here. Today I got a replay on the Gremi Ashi. It's a tier 4 Soviet destroyer that was available in the, or is available in the Founders Pack. I want to put this up here for those of you that are considering getting the Founders Pack so you can see what it's capable of. But also for those of you who aren't considering getting it, you're going to want to, you're going to, want to know what the Gremi Ashi is capable of so you can respond accordingly. It's a very dangerous ship, I'll just start off by saying that. But it comes with an outstanding destroyer-specific captain as well, or commander. Anton Gurren, I believe is his name, and he's, his main trait is it increases the AP penetration, which is very useful. So I use him on, as an inspiration on my American, British, and I do have a German destroyer commander as well. So I use him on all those. I don't think I use him on the Japanese crew, just because the Japanese destroyers are not as gun-centric. And I don't actually have a destroyer-specific Japanese commander unlocked yet, so I have to switch him between my cruisers and destroyers. So, here we're taking a couple shots on this destroyer, which is a good play. I do have a lot of run-and-gun games saved with the Gremiashi that are, you know, high-scoring action pack. <clears throat> Excuse me, action pack games. I picked this one though because there's a few concepts that I want to highlight along with it. First one being target selection. Now you can see we got this destroyer who I kind of left behind here. I'm greedily thinking, man, there's a lot of HP on this battleship. I could potentially, you know, devastating strike him with a torpedo salvo and rack up some damage. That's an incorrect play, and luckily now my smarter half of my brain is saying, come on, you're better than this. Turn around, deal with the destroyer. So, turn around here. Now you'll notice the Gremiashi, its main weakness is a very slow turret traverse. So it takes quite a while compared to other destroyers for the turrets to catch up. Um, so if you do come across one of these, and you can get into a situation where it's forced to kind of get in a close quarters fight where you're circling each other, uh, you potentially would have an advantage in that situation. So keep that in mind if you run into them. If you're playing the ship, just do what you can to mitigate that. That is its primary weakness. Now here we do have an uh, Omaha going around. I'm going to let him continue going around that island. And we're going to try and stealth torpedo him as he comes by. Now as I was expecting him to kind of hug the island fairly closely. So I was hoping to get like a one kilometer type torpedo salvo into him right as he came around. He does kind of continue into a straight line though, which is a little wider. Or it's further away from the island, so it's a longer torpedo shot. And had I known that, I would have angled my ship a little bit better. And you can see there he's, he's a lot farther out than I was expecting, so we got to turn quite a bit. Um, luckily for us, he makes not a very good play at all. He continues to drive in a straight direction. If you have a close quarters destroyer like this, don't ever do that. <laughs> you know, either turn away directly away from him or directly towards him. So that torpedo which is coming at you, you can do what you can to avoid it. And you'll see I did switch over to the AP rounds once he went broadside. Um, I know in my beginner series video on ammo selection, I did say Destroyers should be using HE almost all the time. I don't remember if I added the caveat that close quarters cruisers are ripe for AP Citadel shots, but they definitely are. That video was intended for like beginning players who are just kind of getting the feel for ammo selection. But as you gain experience, as your game evolves, if you have a close quarters cruiser that's going to give you a broadside like that, switch to AP. You have a rapidly reloading gun that can just pump Citadel shots into them left and right, and that'll take them out really quickly. So now we've kind of isolated the threats to our ship, so now we can go back to focusing on the battleship. And that's the right play. I got I run into a lot of teammates and a lot of opponents that are just not picking the, the ships to fight in the proper order. And so it's not the first time I'm going to bring it up, it's certainly not going to be the last time. But, and here we're making our standard destroyer play. You get the torpedoes in the water, switch to HE shells. The intention 
and just set him on fire, get him to burn that damage control party. And then when he gets hit with the torpedo, he's got floods that he can't deal with. Now luckily for us, or our team, the another guy on my team was able to take him out with torpedoes, so that worked out. Now we're in, a, now we're in the proper situation that we want to create. They're left with battleships. We have destroyers, cruisers, battleships. These guys, forget the fact that they're outnumbered, all right? Let's say it was two on two, and we had a cruiser and a destroyer, or two destroyers against two battleships. We should be winning that game nine out of 10 times. You know, destroyers, they're made to take out battleships. Battleships cannot handle destroyers very well. Just, it comes down to how the, Damage is calculated. The battleship is going to over penetrate the destroyer every time it hits it. Unless it's dead on, if it's facing directly at him, the shell might get lodged in it. But in general, you're going to be causing about 1,000 damage per hit, which is not a lot. Even though I only have, what, 13,000 HP on this thing, it's still very hard to eliminate a destroyer with a battleship. But Conversely, I can take this guy out with one or two torpedo salvos, no problem. Now, what am I doing right now? I'm trying to get that island in between us. I'm hardly looking at the main screen. I'm looking at the map. I want to keep him outside my blue detection range until that island is in between us. Then I'm going to close in on him. Now, he is able to spot me right at the last second here. I cut it just a little too close, but that was the intention. I don't know if he was not paying attention, maybe he noticed me, maybe he didn't, maybe he's overwhelmed, maybe he doesn't care at this point because he knows he's going to lose, doesn't matter. That's that's the goal, you want to remain undetected, get in close quarters and then take him out with a torpedo. Now I'm sitting here sailing forward with the torpedo active, that's so I can keep an eye on that aim indicator, that's telling me where he's going and give me a rough idea of how fast he's going. So I can tell he's slammed on the brakes because that aim indicator is barely in front of him, and so I'm getting the additional information, how fast he's going, which direction, yada, 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 <laughs> you know. So use the torpedo mode as an intelligence tool. Incorporate that into your play. It's very helpful. There's a lot of information to be gleaned from it. Now he's either tried to completely stop or, you know, he, he almost did. And you'll notice I fired one salvo and then held on to the next one for a couple seconds. That's a good play. In general, that's a good torpedo play to make. Because, let's say he was going full speed, or he was a full speed cruiser or something. That first salvo, he's going to be reacting by the time he notices I'm there and the play develops. So I want to get the one salvo down to hit him in case he continues on his course. But if I hold on to the next one for two or three seconds, I'm going to see how he reacts. And based on how he's turning, I can then counter that move. So if you can, get in the habit. Now there are times where just launching the torpedoes rapidly works. It's a situational play, but keep that in mind as a possible play and it'll work out for you quite often. Again, it was unnecessary at that point because he was pretty much stopped dead in the water, but I just did, I wanted to point that out as a useful tip for you guys. So at this point, I'm thinking I'm probably not going to be able to score any more points on this guy. I'm just going to try and cap. In retrospect, that was a mistake. I did have, he was close enough that I could have scored some more damage on him. And he's got enough hit points where that cruiser may or may not be able to take him out. So I'm just kind of resigned to the fact, well, let's get some capture points potentially. Help the score out a little bit, but... Um, you know, you want to you want to remain aggressive just to maximize the score and get that get the most XP out of each battle that you can. And I do kind of at the time I kind of got mad at this guy to my right here. You can see I tell him to stop. Smoke generator started. Um, but he he was in the right, I was in the wrong. So the Gramiashi overall. Uh, the Soviet destroyers are going to play as gunboats, kind of long-range damage dealers using their guns. This one does have the stealth torpedo tactic capability as well, though. So keep that in mind. If you see a Gremiashi on the opposing team, get them out of the game as quick as you can. It's a very dangerous ship. 
Um, if you're on the fence about whether you'd like this ship or not, and you're thinking about buying it, you would definitely like it. It's one of my favorite ships. So, I hope that was a good uh, insight into the Gremyashi specifically, and a couple of other tactics I talked about. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, well, consider subscribing. We've got plenty more World of Warships coming down the pipe here. Uh, questions, comments on the ship, or in general, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you guys all later. All right, peace.